When you see a pig running around and she was sour, she could have up to 10 or 15 suckers. And in no time at all, that 15 are breeding and it just multiplies very, very quickly. When you get wet summers, pigs just explode. Happened in the 70s, 80s, happening again now. The last three years we've had a really terrific season and so the numbers have bred up. Now it's turning a little bit drier. They've moved into our paddocks and they're starting to attack our lambs and we want to control that before we start lambing again so we get a better percentage. It's important to me because of the, the damage they'll do. Like we're breeding goats and they'll just eat the kids. I've seen it where they've just eaten everything, the ewes and the lambs. Feral pigs aren't just impacting landholders enterprises, the parasites, the, a number of different diseases that are out there, leptospirosis, brucellosis, Japanese encephalitis. You know, if we get um, FMD come into the country, we know that these animals are going to be a key part in distributing it around into livestock and stuff like that. So we want to make sure that we've, we've done everything within our power, working with landholders at worst case scenario, FMD comes to our shores, that there's going to be a minimal impact on our enterprise. Yeah, pigs carry a lot of diseases, so foot and mouth is a bad one. If it got into Australia, it would just wipe our industry completely out. So we've got to do something about them and destroy everyone we possibly can. Well, there's a range of different options to control feral pigs. You've got your 1080 grain baiting. 1080 meat baiting, you're trapping, you're shooting. Probably the best is to have the range of options all utilised because not one will be the be all and end all. So a range of options is, is your best option to control feral pigs. The 1080 is the best way I've found to get them down to a controllable number. Then try your traps, dogs, shooting. I don't think it's just a one-off thing. A bit like when you do your wild dog baiting, you've got to keep on top of it. It's not hard work, but it pays off in the long run because you don't have a lot of feral pigs. That's the key in all of this, is to reduce numbers, keep them to a minimum level, and, and, and keep on going. It won't just stop after one lot of baiting. You know, we need to do it again to make sure that we're controlling them. Yeah, so that's the importance of, of, uh, of these biosecurity measures. It would be nice to see a lot of the numbers, the feral pig population drop, because we've had the three years of good season. They've just bred and rapidly bred everywhere. So it'd be awesome if we could get some more people around the area to um, start doing this, the free feeding and the pig baiting. Yeah, I'd encourage everyone to have a crack at it, the 1080, have a crack at it and get into it. And you'll get results, real good results if you do the work.